Visualizing dependencies in Jira is not a trivial thing to do. You have the ability to do a blocks and is blocked by a relationship inside of Jira, but that is at the issue level. You can't easily visualize it. Now, if you're fortunate enough to be on Jira Premium, you do get the advanced roadmaps that do allow you to visualize your epics and stories and everything else and how they're dependent on each other. But the view is very, very difficult. And not to mention, Jira Premium requires you to 2x your bill. Now, wouldn't it be nicer if there was a better alternative as opposed to using advanced roadmaps? Well, my good friends over at Moser Labs have launched ClearPath, and this tool is going to completely revolutionize the way that you visualize your dependencies and plan all your future work. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, and don't forget to check out the links down below as you're going to want to use that link to start your free 30-day trial to ClearPath. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. Now, before we get too far into it, there is some setup that you need to do. Now, naturally, this setup is going to occur because if you're using Jira, you have to do this work anyways. So I just wanna explicitly call it out so that you're more prepared when you go and use the app. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have epics. This should be a no brainer and this should be assumed because how else are you using Jira if you don't have epics? Once you have your epics, those epics should also be decomposed into stories, okay? The stories are the work that actually gets planned into your sprints and that your teams execute. And so the use case that we're gonna be solving with ClearPath is, it is kind of hard for a team to boil the ocean. Trying to work on all the problems at all at the same time is going to yield you to have zero traction. And because no traction is no bueno, you want to gradually give your teams, you know, some claws to like bite into the dirt so that they can actually make traction. And we can achieve that by showing our teams the order of operation. We're essentially going to be creating what's called a critical path, right? We're going to show all the different orders of what needs to be done so that the teams can know what the highest priority items are and then what comes after and so on and so forth. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to have all these stories and all these epics. Now, one last little piece of this puzzle. Before we get too far, all of these stories and epics should belong to a release. And so over here in our releases section, you want to make sure that you have an appropriate amount of releases and that those stories, tasks, bugs, epics, all your issue types, that they're associated to some release. Because at the end of the day, if you, again, are not using releases and you are just you know, working on stories because there are stories to be worked on, you're not doing yourself a very good favor, right? There's, there's got to be some method to the madness here because your team just can't like go and solve everything, right? You have to give them focus and we achieve focus by putting the most important work in the most next release that's going to come out and then we plan future releases downstream. And so if you aren't doing that, then you go take care of that first because then everything else is going to make sense. Now, assuming then that we have our releases, we have our epics, we have our stories, the traditional way of doing Jira is then to go into your backlog and sure, you can bring in your version right here and then you can kind of plan your sprints out, but you still lose order of operations. You lose which stories are first and then which ones are next. And you definitely cannot visualize the dependencies. You could, however, open the story up Go over here on the left hand side, link an issue. You can link an issue here. It'll bring you down to the blocked issue. We can link it to another issue over here. And when you click link, yes, we have the establishment, but nowhere on the screen to, can we visually see that we have a relationship with another issue that is dependent on this one. So that becomes really, really hard to visualize. And then your team start making assumptions. And when your team starts making assumptions, trust me, they just start doing work. And when they just start doing work, they're just burning calories and they're not doing anything productive. They're not gaining traction and they're not moving the needle in the right direction. So all things that you want to avoid as a project manager, program manager, because you want your team to always be spending their calories on the most value added thing. After all, that's what Scrum is all about. So how do we help our teams out? Well, now let's enter into ClearPath. So in order to go into ClearPath, I'm gonna delete this link in here that I did earlier, but we're gonna click on ClearPath over here on the left-hand side. And this is gonna bring us into this amazing tool that I think is gonna completely blow your mind. Now it's a little underwhelming here because we haven't selected anything, but rest assured, it's gonna get real good real quick. So first thing you wanna do, you wanna be strategic, right? You wanna pick the release that we're gonna be working on. In this case, I have a released version one, I have a two and a three. 
One is already at the door. I don't care about that one, but version two is coming up next. So that's my first immediate need. And so when I do that, what's going to happen is the application here is going to show us every story, task, bug, everything below the epic that is associated to that version 2.0. So again, if you don't have your stories associated to your releases, you're going to want to go back and make sure you do that, which is a really a good idea to do anyways, because your team shouldn't be working on things just to be working on things. Everything that your team works on, because life is expensive, should align to something greater like a release. So once you have this here, you have a couple of options, right? As you can see here, I have a whole lot of stories that belong to a bunch of different epics. I have some stories that belong to no epic, and then I have some bugs as well. Now, what you can do here is in case this is overwhelming for you, I actually like this view and we're going to come back to this view, but in case you wanted to, you have the ability to hone in on an epic. So if I click on this particular epic here, it's going to remove everything else and it's just going to filter me in just the three stories that belong to that particular epic. Additionally, if I don't want to do that, maybe I don't want the bugs, right? Maybe we're not considering bugs right now. So, so I can only pick my stories and my tasks. Bugs are going to be gone. And now my view is a little bit more compressed and a little bit more focused. Again, I don't really care about this, but you may want to deal with that as well. Also, in your workflow, some teams like to create like a status where you do your refinement before it goes to in development. So maybe you just want to go grab your status that says, hey, I only want the ones that are ready for refinement. Well, in that case, you can be able to do that. So you can filter by status as well. Okay. So once you have that, you essentially want to just have the issues that are going to be in play for your team. Now, everything is relative to the release. And so what we're going to create next is the order of operations. Now, one little quick disclaimer, there's two ways to do this. Method number one is for you to actually go into the stories themselves and do that linking of the issue and do the blocks and block by and whatnot. Again, intuitive, but not very visually. But method number two, which is my favorite method, which is really the reason why I completely fell in love with this tool is that I can go into my stories here and I can zoom in here for you. And I'm going to say, hey, this is a critical story three, two and one. But story one needs to happen first. So I can just, you know, bump this guy up here very quickly and then I can just grab and put my cursor over this black dot here and establish a relationship to this other story. Once I do that, the tool is going to refresh real quickly and you're going to see that story one needs to happen before story two. And I can do the same thing with story three. And so as you can see, I'm going to simply drag and drop here. It does take a second here to refresh. Don't worry. It's not doing anything bad. But now I have these three stories and I have the order of operation. And what's most critical is that when I open up the story, you're going to see that I now have that relationship of which one is blocking and what it's blocked by. I didn't have to go in and actually do, you know, do the drop down and try to figure out the key and everything else. I can, in a very visual way, just draw my lines like this. And so what I can do with the rest of this stuff, right, is I can very simply just say, hey, here's all the work that needs to happen. This guy has to happen before this guy. So I can just move them around and in, in a very intuitive and visual manner, I can start establishing these relationships. So I can say that this one belongs over here. As your teams create all the stories, the tasks, bugs, whatever you want to have, you can create all these hierarchies like this and essentially just build out the ultimate map of what needs to happen. Now, another thing is you can actually do multiple, right? So you're not restricted to just one to one relationships. You can bring in a couple of them and just get very creative with how these things all have to happen. And again, this is a very visual way that I absolutely love that allows you to start building out a plan, right? And so what you end up is with this awesome picture that shows you a hierarchy. And most importantly, it's going to show you order of operations and it's going to show you what your team should be able to work on. Okay, so that's step one. Step one is essentially doing the setup, right? You're establishing these relationships between one story and another relative to the epic and relative to the release that they're in. And after you do this, again, you can do it either visually like I did right now, drag and drop, or you can go into the stories themselves and, you know, establish those relationships there. But whatever way you do it, you're going to end up with a picture like this, which is going to help paint a better picture for you and your team. Now, once you have this, now we get to enter the second phase, which is really our analyze phase. So in our analyze phase, we want to basically understand, okay, so what should our team be working on? Because now that you're visualizing it like this, 
it doesn't make any sense for SSP-2 to be planned into a current sprint because it's way, way down the bottom. And look at all the things that need to happen before in order for SSP-2 to become unblocked. So that's not very good at all, right? So we want to make sure that we are tactically now executing on the stories that don't have any dependencies. So check this out. Now, once you're ready, once you have this picture, we're able to click on the sprints button here, and this is going to show us all of the issues that we can execute that are ready to go. And so you can treat anything that is horizontal as basically something you should plant in your first sprint, because everything that is in this horizontal view is ready to go. It doesn't have any blockers, which means nothing is tied to it, right? And then the next layer down, which is this layer here, these are the next stories you want to work on only after this ones have been completed and it goes down and down in levels. Obviously my mapping here is very, very simple, but you can kind of get the idea of how this will drastically improve your visibility and communicate to your team in a very visual way. Work on these stories first as they don't have any inputs coming in from the top and don't work on the stuff that has an arrow going into it because those items have a precondition, if you will. This one needs to be done first. We're able to essentially visualize this in a very effective yet simple manner. So a couple of things that I want to call out. You're going to be able to manage your schedule risk. You're going to be able to manage your technical risk. You're going to be able to maximize your team's capacity on your objectives. And you're going to be able to estimate your development time in your sprints, right? So now you know, if I click on the sprint button here, how many sprints, total sprints, it should take me to essentially deliver my stories based on, again, that order of dependencies. Because you don't want to work on two or three different conflicting items in the same sprint because the probability that your team's going to be able to successfully deliver on that is kind of small, right? So it makes sense that you are working on blocking items in the previous sprint that are then going to lock another item for the next sprint. And this, by just simply clicking on the sprint button here, it's going to show you, hey, at a minimum, you're going to need four sprints. So when your managers come in and ask you, hey, how long is this going to take? Well, it's very, very easy for you to say, well, it's going to take us at least four sprints because you've already managed all these dependencies. Next up, we have story points. So if you click on this one, this is going to tally up and tell us the most amount of points that are going to take us to deliver on this functionality. So as you can see here, 17 points are in play and it's basically summing up again, the worst case It's summing up all the sto total story points. And you can see the paths where this is going to be take 17. The longest you can click on this 13, it'll kind of show you what that looks like. And you can click on this 12 so you can see what that path looks like. So it gives you options. It gives you the ability to take a look and find out, Hey, what is actually going to work? Right? And so this is going to be a really cool view that, again, builds out these critical paths for you, but in a way that you can have a little bit of control, but at least have data points for you to make more strategic decisions. And then finally, we have bottlenecks. The bottleneck is going to analyze all the tickets and highlight any ticket that has more immediate descendants, i.e. it blocks other tickets that exceeds the threshold set in your preferences. So let's talk about our preferences. So over here in the little gear, we have the ability to set a threshold. So any issue that has more than, let's just drop it down to two, is going to now be our bottleneck, right? So as you can see here, we have this right here has more than two dependencies. And so this becomes a bottleneck. You get to configure that, right? You're going to have to play around and experiment and figure out, okay, what, what is realistic for our team and what's not, right? Because if I drop it to one, you can see that our bottleneck starts really highlighting on other areas because we have multiple areas where one or more ex dependencies exist. And so these all become part of our bottlenecks. So a very visual way so you can figure out which issues your team can work on in parallel and which ones need to be in series, right? So interesting method there. So a couple more things that I want to mention in this video and talking to, with, with respect to talking to ClearPath. You, as we saw, we have the ability to change our bottleneck threshold. We have the ability to change our colors. So if you want to see your critical path, red is always a great color but the critical path is going to basically show you that path that you need to follow in order to be able to hit those objectives. Your bottlenecks can be oranges and your selected path can be blue. You have full color range here, all the colors in the world, so you can use whatever you want. Now, there's a different type of layout. You have tree or you have grid. I really, really like the tree view, but you can also have this grid view that's a little bit more fluid. 
Um, I really like this tree though because it just shows it to you in the right order. Really, really cool view there. And then your lines can be either straight or curved, right? So that just changes a little aesthetics there. I like the curve. I think it feels a little bit more modern. You can also export this out. So if you have stakeholders, if you have folks that don't have the ability to essentially be in your environment, you definitely have the ability here to export out. As you can see, it's going to export out as an SVG which you can then share with your stakeholders. It's going to be a you know, high fidelity file that is going to scale, right? So it's, a, it's not a, a PNG, it's an SVG. So people can zoom in and look at all the finer details um, with that file as well. And that's pretty much it. This is what you're going to get out of this very visual tool. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know as there definitely will be a part two because there's still so much more that you can do with this tool. But this is a really good teaser to get the ball going and get you hopefully very excited about doing your dependency management and hopefully take control of your teams trying to boil the ocean when they really shouldn't be. So if you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like. Make sure you use the link down in the description below to get your free 30-day trial. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. So far